So today, in this video, I'll be sharing with you guys my latest watch acquisition, the Blancpain Perpetual Calendar Reference 5395. So this is part of a series where I share my readers uh, my latest watch acquisitions, the reasons behind my purchases, and why I buy what I buy. So basically, my watch collecting philosophy and approach in general. So I previously did you know, similar videos on my RWC Mark uh, 17, my Frederick Constant Moon Face Manufacturer, and most recently my Frank Muller Casablanca 5850. So which I'm selling, you know, uh, to recoup some of the money that I spent on this bong pond. So yeah, so now without further ado, let's get into why I bought this. So as some of you may know, I was on a writing gig for SGX watches for the past 6 months. And although I was already familiar with some of the more affordable watches, you know, because of the micro brand reviews that I do over here on Russell Shook, my stint at uh, SGX watches definitely opened my eyes to the world of hot horology. You know, I covered uh, my watches and first watches and wonders. You know, I covered everything from the Patek Nautilus 5711 to like the Arlanga and Zonga Super Speed. So as a result, you know, my knowledge and my passion for horology really has grown and really has deepened. I wanted a uh, when my time at SGX watches was coming to an end, I wanted a timepiece, you know, a commemorative timepiece to reflect that uh, a bit within a reasonable budget. So after trawling through the internet. Uh, over many sleepless nights, I finally landed on this the Blanc Pond Perpetual Planner 5395 which I saw you know, at an auction so let me hold it closer to the camera so you guys can see just how beautiful it is so if you ask any watch enthusiast what the most desirable complication in modern watchmaking might be chances are the answer will be the Perpetual Calendar representing the pinnacle of calendar complications Perpetual Calendar watches are extremely complicated to manufacture and assemble and therefore highly coveted by enthusiasts. So unlike your lesser calendars, you know, a perpetual calendar takes into account the leap year, which means that you have to manually adjust the date during February. In theory, a perpetual calendar requires no manual intervention until the year 2100, as long as you keep it winded, of course. Now, that being said, many brands make perpetual calendar. Why Blanc Pond? For one, no, Blanc Pond is a brand. A uh, Blanc Pond, by the way, fun fact, established in 1735, Blanc Pond is the oldest watch brand in existence and it's a brand I have deep respect for especially after watching Houdin Key's stocking watcher segment with uh, John Cloyd Beaver so in his philosophy you know uh, in his video with Houdin Key uh, John Cloyd Beaver said that his philosophy with Blanc Pond was this since 1735 there has never been a quartz Blanc Pond watch and it never will be that was the brand's motto back in the day and at a time where you know the entire Swiss watch industry believed quartz was the future of watch making Rolex had the Oyster Quartz, Audi Mont Piguet had Quartz, Royal Oaks, and even the usually conservative Patek Philippe uh, tried their hand at making several Quartz watches. But not Blanc Pond, not this. Uh, JCB wanted the brand to represent traditional watch, uh, Swiss watchmaking, so much so that he introduced this. Okay, not exactly this, but introduced the first professional calendar from the brand in 1985, right at the height of the Quartz crisis. So as you guys can see here, let me just, uh, the 12 o'clock sub down has a date. The 3 o'clock sub down has the day, the 9 o'clock sub down has the month, and over here on X o'clock, you know, you have the moon phase. It's a very symmetrical down layout that re really represents all the calendar functions that you ever need. Uh, it's a very quintessential, traditional, perpetual calendar layout that I would say is very befitting of Long Pond. And in many senses, you know, Long Pond's introduction of its perpetual calendar in 1985 was not only a defiant statement by a recently reintegrated brand to take the path less traveled, but also a statement signifying that you know, traditional Swiss watchmaking as we know it will stand the test of time. In fact, it held such significance that um, JCB decided to keep you know, the original Blanc Pong perpetual calendar that he introduced in 1985 for his own personal collection, which is very identical to this reference 5395 here. In fact, uh, the only difference is that you know, at the 12 o'clock, it has a leap year indicator, whereas this doesn't. But yeah, so when I, f I distinctly remember seeing you know, uh, John Claude Beaver's personal Bong Pong Perpetual Calendar in the Talking Watchers video, I remember I was, I was watching it in high school, I was still in high school back then, because that episode came out in 2014, so that was a long time ago. So I remember watching it while I was still in high school, and I remember thinking to myself, what a beautiful watch that was. So when, you know, seven years later, I trot through the net, I saw this come out for auction, I knew I had to act. Its estimate was a bit more than my initial budget for a commemorative watch, which was thoroughly blown by the way, after factoring commissions, shipping and taxes. But it took me back to when I first learned about John Claude Beaver, the titan that he is in the industry, right? As well as Blanc Pond during the iconic Talking Watches episode. 
like I said, this reference 5395 is almost identical to the modern JCB's personal collection. Except that that was in white gold, this is in yellow gold, and this also have the lip indicator. But for what it is, you know, a Swiss perpetual calendar in yellow gold, in solid yellow gold, the estimate was relatively low. One could even say a bargain. It was still more money than I was prepared to part with, but I couldn't resist putting in like a bit, just for the sake of it, you know. But with the auction scene going on the tear in recent months, I had no expectation of winning this watch, you know. But at least I could pat myself on the back and tell myself that I tried. So like Anthony Hopkins at this year's Oscars, I didn't even bother to follow the auction live, you know. As such, it was to my great surprise when I received an email after the lot had concluded, stating that my absentee bid had won, so apparently I was the only one to be on the lot. To say that I was ecstatic would be an understatement. I never thought that owning a solid gold mechanical perpetual calendar would be something that I could achieve at this stage of my life. I never thought it would be something that you know would be in my grasp. It did deplete my savings more than I would have liked, which is why I'm selling a Frank Muller that I featured in the previous video. But what are savings for if not for times like this, right? It did get me some time to get used to you know this uh 34mm case size. But its smaller dimensions or imbues a watch with like a sort of old school, traditional, gentlemanly sort of rakish charm that complements, you know, the old school look of you know this Blanc Pomp special calendar. And Blanc Pomp is a brand in general, perfectly. You know, I think you know for such a little watch, it definitely still packs like a punch in terms of the wrist presence here. So long story short, I can now say that I own a Blanc Pomp special calendar in yellow gold. Damn, that's a nice ring to it. And if you are sweet to own one yourself after watching this video, an example is currently going under the hammer at Sotheby's right now. So good luck, maybe you'll win an auction like I did. Alright, that's it for this video. So this is something a bit different where I show you guys my personal watch collection. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, do subscribe and do share the video around. As always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao!